Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio and brought to you as always by Export Ultra. This is the agenda for Friday the 11th of October. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. And a big happy Friday to James McConey. Hello there, Manai. How are you? Very well, thank you, James. This isn't the first time we've seen each other this week. Weird. No, it isn't. We 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 duelled. We went to to war and uh, we in game of two halves. We did. <laughs> we did. We went. I'll tell you what. Rave reviews uh, last night on the episode eight thirty p.m. on Sky Sport and Sky Sport Open. I'm sure if you go and uh, there'll be some sort of replayability. Uh, rave reviews from my mum, who said, "Good show, best one so far." And then she said, oh no, you were so close to a win. Very good though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good mum um, review because, you know, it's funny, eh? Like, a, I, I get the feeling that a dad review is kind of like, oh, you lost. Yeah. Like next summer is, it's just really an entertainment show. We are yeah. a bit competitive out there. We do want to win. We do want to win. Yeah. But um, I quite like how she is. Oh, well, you know. Oh, well, you lost. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah my dad hasn't watched it. My mum, though, like... The first ever radio show I ever did, she tuned in. You know, I texted her, oh, mum, I'm going to be on the radio this weekend, blah, blah, blah. Um, she tuned in, and her feedback was, this first show on Hauraki, she goes, I, I love the music selection. I didn't pick the music. No. <laughs> you don't get to pick the music. Yeah, she's saying, yeah, gee, you've got a great taste in music. It's like, yeah, did you listen to anything I said? What about the stuff I said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. No, I really enjoyed the music. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> that, 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 That's almost what you want. You don't want them to sort of, Drill down and give you a proper ear check is what they call it in the business. When someone yeah. listens to what you, you show, they're doing an ear check. And the last thing you need is your mum to go, hey, now, when you <laughs> could you make the outs a bit cleaner? <laughs> Do I, you have an out before you go into the break? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, keep it to about two to three minutes tops. You yeah. know, and if you could just stick on the one topic without wandering off into the weeds, it's a, yeah, that'd it's be great. A, Don't worry, I get that from my dad. He'll, all right. he'll give me the full, you should do this, you should do this. How come you haven't done this? Have you listened to Hamish and Andy before? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, because he's a consumer of um, content, isn't he, your yes, dad? Yes, And he does sound like he's probably a, a creative man as well. Very creative man, yeah. 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 Wasted in the in the coal mines of Western Australia. But yeah. <laughs> however, Get him on the ACC by the sounds of it. Well, we because his nickname's Stu, and during the NRL season, he'll basically live tweet every Warriors game, but on Facebook. So, oh, right. So he'll get, he'll get... I've got a mate who does that. So yeah, he does the... The updates and what, what he's pissed off about, what was good. Yeah, yeah, this is bullshit. That should have been a try. We need to get rid of this guy, bring this guy in. So I thought what we should do is after each Warriors game, get him on. His nickname's Stu. We'll call it Stu and on. Mm. And then he comes in with his NRL conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> My mate is called, oh, I'm happy to um, name him and shame him, Matt Sievel, a uh, wonderful man. I went to school with him. He was the fastest guy in, in our rugby team. Actually, we might have. No, he was. He was the fastest guy because he won the 100 metres in bare feet against a guy <laughs> um, who was had full running shoot spikes, spikes on and was a New Zealand representative. <laughs> but this Matt Sewell could scurry like a bloody rat. You know, he's like... Argh. And so he is the guy, and he played rugby for King Country when they were in the First Division. So he's played First Division rugby, NPC, yeah. but he's mad about league. And if the Warriors are going badly, he it's just <laughs> stream of conscious, like just the whole thing of... Um, too much information about how he's feeling about the team. Yeah. So he goes, it affects everything. It affects oh. his whole day and, you know, the rest of, you know, the week. I think. Yeah. And the, like, won the 100 metres in bare feet is brilliant. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He, No one was picking him to win. The guy in the spikes looked fantastic. Short odds at the tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Hugh Percy. I mean, these are names that mean nothing, but he could run. And yeah. so he was running 10.83 as a, as a um, schoolboy. Yeah, he Hugh, was a proper... Hugh Percy was. Hugh Percy was. But James, what was his name? Seville? Matt Seville. Matt Seville. Ran him down at Hamilton Boys. Must so have, Must have done like a 10-7 in bare feet. <laughs> oh, the, I don't I think Hugh got, it wasn't his best race. I right. mean, you know, he would have done that on a nice Mondo track surface, yeah. or whatever. This is the grass at Hamilton Boys. Uh, Unforgiving. Yeah. And anytime you see a man in bare feet in front of you, you probably <laughs> give up, wouldn't you? Yeah. And you start to sort of get speed wobbles. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Go back to my processes because he ran so beautifully. And Matt's just going, you know, and he could just shift, but he's just like Stu, your dad. Um, what's yeah. your, what's your dad's first name? Warren. Warren Stewart. He's uh, those two together could form a bloody. Um, they could almost be like grumpy old men, three hundred and sixty, like oh New Zealand God. styles. Yeah. Oh my God, mate! Mm. 
We should do it. That'd be a great little TV segment. Is NRL 360, but it's just some guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not journalists or anything. Yeah. You get two dudes from opposing teams, you know, supporters, yeah. and then one other random, an actual journo, and they just go for it. NRL 360. Start off with your dad and my mate. Yes. And then we just... um. Warren and Matt Siebel. Yeah. <laughs> get them together. I mean... The, I'll adjudicate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to love winding um, Matt up, but then I realised he actually does care. Like, he's a proper fan who's fully yeah. invested. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate, yeah. He's it's, not just teeing off on them. No, but it, it, it's also a part of being a Warriors fan, and I think that's the part that people that don't follow the Warriors, that's the part they don't understand. They're like, that team sucks. They never make the, they've never won the comp, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. It's like, that's not, that's not what it's about. A large part of being a Warriors fan is hating the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the weird thing. Like, the amount of love now for the Warriors and the people who say day one and all this sort of stuff. I'm, I mean, <clears throat> there, there are people out there who are lying. They are. hundred <laughs> percent. There's no way. Like, I know that the, I'm not sure what the crowd numbers went down to, but it would yeah. have been maybe eleven or 12,000 po- possibly. Oh, yeah. Even lower. Maybe. Even lower, yeah. yeah. For, well, around that sort of. 2019, just before COVID, mm. th- those were dark days. Yeah. I-, I was out there sitting in the in the sideways rain just because it was something to do. But but there would be the faithful there, probably I'd say about six thousand of them, and they'd be sitting in the pissing rain, watching you know yeah. someone line up a conversion to cut the deficit to forty. <laughs> like we're still getting spanked, um, but they stuck with it. Actually, while we're on league, um, Sean Johnson, this came out overnight, has come out of retirement to answer Stacey Jones' SOS. To play halfback for the Kiwis in a couple of weeks. This is, I mean, they'd been talking about because um, Jerome Hughes obviously looked injured in the grand final, and uh, Sean Johnson came out on, I think, on his own podcast and said, "Yeah, Stacey rung me. I'm not playing." And then now all of a sudden he's come out and he's he's going to answer the bat signal. Where did this come from? How? I think he had to. Did he ask him? Once after Jerome or before it was Jerome? Before Jerome. Before Jerome. So that's a, but the problem is Jerome Hughes not being available. The yeah. injury's worse than they thought. That pretty much put them in yeah. the kaka. So old um, Shawnee J, I guess it was an easy one to say no to because you've got the Dally M medal winner, so yeah. everything's going to be fine. But then without him, um, oh, it's, you're not scraping the barrel. I like all our, no. our, our halves. Like It's never been stronger, mm. but... Um, but you are getting the guy who can drive you around the park and just do everything to you know, yeah. like just the right way. I didn't realise that Sean Johnson hadn't played for the Kiwis in five years. I suppose Oh yeah. There was a period there where I feel like the Kiwis hadn't played in like eighteen months, almost two years. Remember through COVID? Basically Kiwi rugby league didn't there was no internationals for a long, long time. There was a blockbuster test at Mount Smart yeah. with Latrell and Joey Manu sort of like trading blows. It was a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. I don't even know what the score was. It was only two points in it. Aussie might have won that. And I think it might have been Latrell's day. Yeah, oh, he has those. Yeah. And then last year, of course, there was the, the massive upset and we won, you know, beat uh, one of the strongest Aussie teams, Jerome Hughes at the helm there as well. Well, that was a spanking, right? In, yeah. in the Tron. We've, <laughs> I've had a spanking in the Tron before, <laughs> mainly by myself. <laughs> but um, the thing about it is that the spanking in the Tron was one of the best um, – displays of like we, we had one Kiwis test like that I don't know you would have been young Manaya, but um over in England I think it was a 24 uh, nil scoreline Manu right. Vatuvai Brent Webb oh yeah on yeah. fire I, I think Wayne Bennett might have been coaching us then and so early it was just a massive yeah. shutout and everyone was like holy shit that was worth getting up for I remember one thing that I miss about the Kiwis is watching as a kid there were so many more northern hemisphere tests you'd get up at stupid o'clock mm. and watch those and we had so many more Kiwis, uh, sorry, Engl- Kiwis that played in England in the Kiwis team that we don't have anymore. Yeah. So Peter Hicku got selected to this Kiwis squad. He's playing for Hull, and I think he's the first dude in like six, seven years. I think the last one was um, Thomas Lulua. Yeah, Thomas would always get picked. Yeah, but but back in the day, you would have all sorts of dudes yeah. that were playing over there. Um, your Pauls, your Paul Robbie brothers. Pauls. Robbie always got picked. Henry should have been picked more. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes we ever made as a as a nation. <laughs> New Zealand, <laughs> our, our national um, uh, shame of not uh, persisting with Robbie Paul. We just, I mean, Gene Namu was, was the Warriors six, but um, Henry, sorry, Henry Paul was the one they ignored yeah. time and time again. Every time we played, the Aussies would go, 
oh, he's a player. Yeah. Wow, he's good, you know. And then and then we say like, goodbye. Yeah. Off you go to Wigan to win some three championships <laughs> and a bloody man you know, of steel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it because his brother was slightly better than him? And so then we, for some reason, we knocked them down a peg. He's like, yeah, your brother's better. Uh, yeah. Ro- Robbie could play multiple positions, so he could. Yeah. He was like Thomas Lillewa. You, you shove him in anywhere. Um, Just the league player. I think Henry was better at his peak. Yeah, because he was like the. He was like Benji. He was a hot stepper. He was goosing all over the place. Yeah, certain selectors don't like that. They don't like a goosey. Nah. Mm. Um, please leave Vinicola. There was all sorts of dudes over there. Oh, you bring him back. Yeah. This was my. This was the height of my. Um, NRL fandom was around that sort of era. It's you would have been really young. Oh, I, guess I was. You, yeah. you were really young for that when they finally played the Paul brothers together. Um, it was an absolute revelation. I think. I mean, I remember covering one test for Sunday News in in uh, Sydney. They just lost, uh, and I went into the changing room, and um, Gordon Tallis took me into the Aussies changing room. Just awesome. come with me, mate. And so you're not getting kicked out when you got Gordon Tallis. Fuck no. He, he put me under his arm, and I was like, okay, cool, thanks, mate. And so I went in, and um, I saw there were some pretty impressive sights, actually. Yeah. I don't know if I really want to say, but I did okay. see some sights. Okay. Yeah. It could be left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll leave that. Maybe the out. next book. Yeah. Um, but then uh, that was uh, when Henry Paul played bloody well. And it took another, I want to say, three or four years until Frank Endicott finally went, oh, maybe we'll get him back in. This guy's all right. Yeah. And, he, and we absolutely smashed them over at North Harbour Stadium. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. No, so, well, you're right. I was young, but that, this was when that Stacey Jones rugby league game had come out. Oh, right. And so that captured my attention. Now, my dad's obviously always watching league, and so I had a passing interest in it. But once I got my hands on the PlayStation game, then I was like, oh, I know all the players. Now I'm up at 6 o'clock in my nana's living room watching, you know, us take on England. Um, the Hair Bears, Joe Nullivar, um Tony Pulitua. Tony Pulitua, yeah. Paul Rohihi's name always stuck in my <laughs> mind. For I love reason. Paul Rohihi. He was when he got busted for um, lifting the knee into the tackle and stuff. And I was like going, come on, that's just the, everyone does it. Even the Aussies do it. Some are just a little bit more yeah. pronounced with it. Eh? Was it Solomon Ikata got done for it recently yeah. as well? Um, Siliasi Vunivalu used to cannon, like yeah. jump and cannonball himself into tackles. I don't know. It's innovation. It is, yeah. It was just part part of, I mean, let's just say it's kind of um, when you grow up and you you play a little bit of league, uh, you know, it's usually just at lunchtime. You're always getting somebody who does the big stride and the knee, you know, the knee out. It's like just, it's just the way it goes. And then when they outlaw stuff like that, you're going, okay, all right. And then. How are you going to? Because you're trying to protect yourself, you know, and also well, trying to fuck the other dude up a little bit. This was before, yeah, I guess maybe you could you could say you're protecting the, the tackler's head. Yeah. But this was before they even penalised um, high shots or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went, no, that knee thing that you're doing, those Kiwis, because uh, you could tell he's a Kiwi, that's what you do in every <laughs> playground around New Zealand, is yeah. you lift the knee, <laughs> and you go. You're only going to do it once, and they won't come at you again. Yeah. Uh, just on league, and I love Shawnee J, but um, I noticed that Nelson Asofa Solomono is out because of that stupid ban that got him uh, yeah. ruled out of the grand final. Is he just getting penalised for being big? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And Kiwi. And Kiwi. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For looking like a mean sucker. Yeah. There is a lot of that because if it's a smaller dude, you just you won't get done for that kind of thing, yeah. you know? it's and it, and it comes from rugby league being adjudicated solely on vibe. And they do that at the judiciary as well. What's the vibe of this? Yeah. And the vibe is we can't have Big Nelson out there, you know, head high on people, tipping people up, doing all this kind of stuff. It's almost like they want to get the, the guy's passport. Where, where are you from, mate? Yeah. And Louis, can I see your papers? Kiwi, you're off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're that's it. Yeah. Oh, you're from Toowoomba? Yeah, nah, stay here, mate. You'll be sweet. You're all good. Um, so, yeah, so we play Australia in, I think, in Christchurch in uh, October 27th. So it's a couple of weeks away. Uh, I don't know if there's... I don't know. I don't really know what the appetite is for rugby league at the moment. I I know that, you know, that the casual fan sort of falls off once the Warriors are eliminated, and then the diehards tend to fall off after the grand final. Yeah. So do you think it'll it'll fire back up again when that game comes around? Um, I was just going to say the promotion of Kiwis games needs a bit of a boost, and maybe that's us at Sky need to to do that as well because. Like you look, look at us talking about league. It is a big part of our sporting fandom. You know, yeah. the Kiwis are massive, and um, we need to get a bit more hyped about it because yeah. you know that if it's rugby, 
for example, the ACC, we when the team's released, all the nicknames go out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's time that we did that for the Kiwis yeah. and actually got, give them a taste. Maybe it's time we looked at ourselves, the Alternative Commentary Collective. Yeah. We're part of this media landscape. We are. And what, where are the nicknames? And um, do we really want to piss off all those <laughs> Kiwi guys? <clears throat> well, Nelson's not in the team, so that's good. Yeah. You wouldn't want to give him a nickname he didn't like. He um, So we were at the Radio Awards about a couple of years ago. I think you might have been there as well. You were with us. We were, we had a room to get ready at in the um, Sky City Hotel across the road. And at the time, the Kiwis were in town, and they were staying in the same hotel. So we're all going up the lift to get changed in the room, have a couple of beers, then go to the Radio Awards. We get into the lift. I'm talking, I definitely remember Lee, Jerry, I feel like you were there, mm. G-Lane, some loud individuals. We all get into the lift. Nelson Asafa Solomon is in the lift, and it goes dead silent all the way up to about the eighth floor. Then we jump out. Then everyone starts talking again. And that's just how scary Nelson is. Yeah. As a, he might be the biggest man I've ever seen in real life. Yeah. He's he probably terrifying. wanted to join in on the on the bands. I know. Poor guy. I know. Poor bastard. Um, uh, anyway. well, before we move on from Please. league, uh, there's one thing I wanted to say about Sean Johnson is – his highlight reel is crazy, and I remember being in Queensland when he scored that outrageous try against the Broncos, beat about seven players and just went 70 metres or something. But my favourite Sean Johnson try is at the end of that World Cup semi final against England when it was the last play of the game pretty much, and he put the step on, the outside step, it looked like he was going to cut back in, and then just skinned um, England and scored sort of nearish the corner, out wide anyway, and um, I think it was the kick to win it as well that he needed to slot. Yeah. And to see Sam Burgess and all the English men, men you know, in their faces was <laughs> unreal. Just knowing that they'd had a, played a bloody good tournament. That was their chance to win it yeah. at home, World Cup. Um, generational players like Sam Burgess and all these other guys. But Sean Johnson, just an absolute clutch genius moment. Yeah. Um, I, I, did, I do love early Shawnee J. Here's a controversial question for you. Sean Johnson or Stacey Jones? Ooh. Because those were our two halfback options for this next test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. Stace, the little general. I mean, it's it might be how mm. old were you when you watched each yeah. player? Yeah, it's, it's too tough. It's actually quite good that J Jerome Hughes has come through and just been world class because even I love Gary Freeman. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so... I'd say Freeman, Jones, and um, and yes, Johnson yeah. at their peak are probably all re relatively equal. Yeah. But Jerome Hughes looks like he's slightly better. I mean, you Gallien, think so? well, yeah, yeah well. medalist if he ca carries on. Yeah. And uh, playing like that, then we might actually have our goat halfback. But really? I think those three are uh, neck and neck. Neck and neck. Yeah. Between Gary Freeman at his peak was crazy good. Yeah. Well, he couldn't spiral the. Ball off his left hand. We were talking about that, yeah. yeah. The end over end pass, the socks down. Yeah, end over end. The Gary Fred. But that was the, the you know, the, the style of the day. There are lots of Aussies that still do end over end. Oh, yeah. 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 A lot of them. Um, but, um, yeah, Freeman, jeez, he could run. He was he was into everything. He was aggressive. Yeah, he was he was great. Stacey, just freakish gliding runner, you know, great <laughs> bloody moves, didn't he, old Stace? Scurrier. As well, yeah, in his own could. right, he, he could, could scurry. scurry. <laughs> he could scurry. Yeah, low to the ground. That was it. So. Low to the ground, but like a rat up a drain pipe. He was good. <laughs> so, I mean, Sean. I feel like there's two two versions of Sean Johnson, the the later career game manager. So it's almost COVID separates them, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Or, or COVID well, and Cronulla. Cronulla. Cronulla separates them. So yeah. then you go, um, Sean EJ before he went to Cronulla, just excitement machine, crazy tries, hot step it. He hot stepper comes back and then he um, even he's, at, he's, the, he's the elder statesman. Even at Cronulla, he was very much the game manager organizer. I think his might have been his first year at Cronulla. He led the league in um, try assists. Right. So you know, it, the game changed and then and then that last season, not this one that he just had, but the one before, he should have won Dally M. Um, he got dudded by Ponga at the end. Oh but, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, all right. Let's take a Wait. quick. Oh, Sorry. you could say that. Let's take a quick break. We'll, we'll take a quick break. We're gonna gonna pay the bills, as they say. We'll be right back. All right. Just uh, before we bin the league chat all together, we have teamed up with Hallensteins to present the ACC's best of 2024 Warriors edition. So this is on Instagram. We want to know what the best moments were on the field, 
off the field for the Warriors 2024 season. We've got four categories to roll out over the next four days. Last night we kicked it off with the best off-field performance. Our nominees are Stacey Jones rolling a durry in the coach's box <laughs> uh, and Marcelo Montoya asking what's the point of cheerleaders on the Montoyas. Did you see that? Clip? No, no. He was basically, because uh, his wife, Taylor, she was a cheerleader for the Bulldogs. Oh. That's how they met. And um, he was asking, what's the point of cheerleaders? She said, you're a winger. You're the closest thing to a cheerleader. So don't you be asking, what's the <laughs> point of those? I think for me, Stacey Jones rolling a durry in the coach's box. That is, that's an all-timer. I, I didn't realise that actually happened. When was this? Yeah, this was uh, sort of early doors in the season. Um, someone noticed it just in the back. You know when they cut up to the coach's box? Right. He's standing at the back just rolling a durry. <laughs> It must Shit, have been one of the good. must have been one of the losses we took. He he is um <clears throat> he's a wonderful human, Stacey Jones, great great bloke, and um loves his cricket weirdly. Like oh, yeah, really? in, in the off season, even when he is at, at the peak of his fame, he'd be up in the west west stand at Eden Park just watching really? the one day and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of cricket, we were just looking at the scoreboard for this English game at the moment. Um, so England scored. <laughs> A record-breaking 823 for seven. Oh, my God. And, and by the way, declared. Uh, so their, their man, Harry Brooks, scored 317. Uh, first triple century in a long time. Joe Root got 262. <laughs> so Joe Root gets 262 and doesn't get the headline because Harry no. Brooks scores 317. Exactly. If, so And they declared as well at 823 to give themselves a chance to win. I don't think if I was in charge of that team, I would not declare. I'd go for the thousand, even if it meant it was a draw, because my 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 theory is. A lot of people, people win test matches all the time. Mm. People do not score a thousand runs in an innings very often. No. So I would want to get on the old um, export ultra beer bottle cap question, but for scoring a thousand runs. But what's going on over there in Pakistan? This is well, ridiculous. They're, they're producing uh, wonderfully flat pitches. Like you, <laughs> I was just going to say, oh, you can't say that pitch is a road because I can imagine some of the roads in Pakistan will be quite tricky to bat on. <laughs> but but this one is like uh, this one is amazing for because Pakistan first innings five fifty six. But um, you probably look at that if you're England, you're like Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's daunting, right? And they went in there, but. Um, it's interesting because it looks like they were playing baseball. So Crawley um, opened and got 78 at almost a runner ball. Um, uh, Harry Brook was almost a runner ball for his 317. Jesus Christ. And, um, and Joe Root was just dragging his head. Or oh, Ben Duckett was better than runner ball uh, with his 84. <laughs> was it Ben? I don't know what his name yeah, is. Yeah, it's Ben. Yeah. I figure it's Ben. It's B here. Yeah. Um, but Joe Root, was um, he was batting at uh, 70. So that was not quite... You know, yeah. baseball, but still pretty good for test matches, and that's that's just how you get eight twenty three. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good for the sport to make um, test matches a bit more relevant. But like yeah. I said, I'd go for the ton. I the always kilo. feel, um, and uh, <laughs> you go for the ton. Exactly, you're so close. <laughs> um, I always feel that the um, that the, the your test team, like we've got Phillips down there, who can. Pretty much go nuts if if you yeah. really want to. You do need someone like like, like that because Harry Brook, he's ready to explode at any time. So yeah. you've got to have your you've got to have your volcano down there, mate. Yeah, for you've sure. Got to, you, you've, and I've, we missed a trick there with old Guppy. Like we made him open at Tess and then never gave him a decent go at number five or six. Yeah, you think he should have been further down? Yeah, yeah, further down. And everyone goes, oh, I can't play spin that well. It's like, well, who I can? Don't know. Yeah, it's, name yeah. a Kiwi who's a Great player, maybe Kane Williamson, but yeah, yeah, freak. Um, and then, um, remember Jesse had a brief go and he scored a double ton against India yeah. batting at number five. So, I always thought it's good having a, someone down there who can just um, accelerate the score. Like Chris Kens would do that, yeah, back in the day, yeah, he was uh, just amazing, even even just for the for the vibe, even you know, yeah. <laughs> like just to and know you've got vibe. that dude down there, yeah, Orem did it. Yeah, um, old uh, so, Gilchrist was the well, he was the OG sort of like coming in at six or seven and just going blasting. actually it's not over yet blasting a bloody ton. Um, Roy Andrew Simons, yes, yeah, he's another one of them. Yeah, so you do you need that firecracker down there, yeah. the volcano, as you say. The volcano down 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 the order helps, and 
and Harry's quite high in, in their order. I think was he five? Was betting five? Yeah, just just for your own entertainment, even yeah. more so than like actual. Well, it makes people go because you go watch this guy, you know, because that was what it was like there for Chris Cairns. It was like yeah. shit, he might go off here. Yeah, yeah, because I was at the, I was at the cake tin when Martin Guptill put that one on the roof in the twenty fifteen yeah yeah um, World Cup. That was fucking exciting. Yeah, um, was he the second man ever to do it? Yeah, you, you're right. You need that volcano. He could have been it. He could have been it. They did. They never gave him a chance. They'd only given him the chance. Um, the America's Cup. I feel like we've been talking about it for about a month, but it actually starts this weekend in uh, earnest. So I don't know. Like I feel like it's definitely um, it feels like a white boomers sport um, to me. Oh yeah. Massive like TV one America's Cup coverage. Huge. The only thing bigger than that. Um, was when Liam Lawson made Formula One. They really went to town, TV One. Yeah. Did you see that? But there is a certain section of society who's been going ape shit about Liam L- And I, I'm not saying it's like I'm not excited about it too. It is. It's great. But it's like, yeah. do we love Formula One that much? Oh, no, apparently we do. And it's the drive to survive thing. That's big. Yeah. But also there's, um, they love to mention a bit of Bruce McLaren, yeah. Denny Holm, or the whole sort of like, you yeah. know, go through the list, Chris Amon. Yeah. There's a history thing. It's like we belong at this top table and yeah. where is our guy? You've got one now. Yeah, I know it is. But you, you're so right about it being a rich old guy sport sailing. Yeah. Because just this morning um, I was talking to Lane about it and I, I was like, oh, old Russell Coates is going to get fired up. He's like, no, no, Russell Coates is the, he's in the sail GP now and it's, Grant Dalton Papali'i, who's in the yes. <laughs> in the so in the <laughs> other one, and I was like, well, but why I'm getting them confused is because all that happens is they do a race or they don't do a race here in New Zealand, and then they take the government to court, and th- that's why it's so confusing. They've both done it, you know. Well, well you might have just have, <laughs> the fact that you just mentioned Grant Dalton Papali'i. Sorry, <laughs> I was just thinking, is there something the ACC could do where we discuss? The greatest name in New Zealand sport, and oh. uh, and it has to be right. just the name, and so it could be Williams, right? So you've got Yvette, Sunny Bill, Brian, you know, like or it could be Williams, Tim Nanai. Yeah, it could be Dalton, because you've got Andy Dalton, Grant Dalton, Tanya, Tanya Dalton, Dalton Papali'i. Yep, and then, but some people, it's like uh, you you might just be trading on your on your one. One person, so it could be Lomu, right? Lomu's doing a lot of hard He's work. He's doing a lot of hard work, but um, but but that's that's fine because McLaren's doing the same thing, right? Yes, McLaren is doing. But you could say, well, actually, that's still the greatest name because you're everywhere every single time there's a Formula One race. The McLaren name yeah. is there. So I think Edmund Hillary won our um, greatest New Zealander of all time yeah. thing. So. He's doing a, a lot of hard work for the Edmonds. For the Edmonds, there. yeah. So <laughs> the greatest name name in New Zealand sports. So, for example, the Crows, they've got two. The Meads, they've got more than that because they had um, Rhonda who played for um, New Zealand. Who's and Helen I think even Meads? Shelley played basketball for New Zealand. All right. Yeah. So the Whitelock. <laughs> Whitelock's doing all right. He, but mainly it's Sam doing most of the um, heavy lifting, isn't he? But he does oh, have a good choir behind Taylor. him. Um, Barrett, obviously. Barrett is definitely up there, isn't he? You'd have to throw Smiley in there too. Yes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though if it was like something like John <laughs> that, yeah. that took it out. It's true. It's it's tough, but um, in the ACC, I'll have to work out the parameters of this because I've just made it up now. Yeah. But it's the greatest name, greatest sporting sporting names. Yeah. Um, greatest sporting names. Um, You're right. With give them a taste. Now, if you so this is greatest New Zealand sporting names. Yes. So if you go Williams for Sonny Bill, will you allow Serena? No, and, it's, no, it's okay. New Zealand, no. Okay. But I will allow Yvette and, <laughs> yeah. and her brother Roy, even though none of these people are related. I wonder no. if Brian and Sonny Bill, they could be related though. P- potentially. Potentially. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of, there'll be some Ioannis uh, in there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you Josh could... Josh Ioanni. Yeah, you can put some, some names forward because... You know, you know, there's going to be, and Williams is kind of very generic. It's just one of those names. It's just always, like you say, it's Smith. Even, Smith. Well, Smith, yeah. Conrad, Aaron, Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, Smith. The Smith would go close. We've had a few, haven't we? Had a few Smiths. Well, was there a Tyrone Smith in the in the Kiwis as well? Um, uh, can, oh, I know. Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith. Yeah, the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, there, there could be something in there. This will um, this will trigger someone. So get onto the old voicemail thing and send us in greatest um, New Zealand sporting name. Yes, what um, is it? We did try. I tried. It was a few years ago. Someone made the longest run-on name in the National Rugby League. So oh, yeah. they would have you know this first person, you know Grant Dalton Papali'i, blah 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 mm. blah. They got about seven out of it. I tried to do it with rugby and you know couldn't. Um, but this this is definitely more doable. Um, it's probably more we could sort of have an offshoot of the competition or to have the just the best sounding iconic name because Hydro Cassini, which is <laughs> he's basically hydrogen oxygen. He's Hydrocini Orcasini. And he's nitro. Someone. Yeah, nitro, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hydro Nitro Orcasini. Yeah. And so that's probably one of the greatest names just because it's so cool. And then that that's a whole other category because yeah. Even John Aloma was kind of like that was just such John an Loma. original. Like you never heard that name. There's, uh, there was never another Jonah playing for. I mean, if you say Jonah, yeah. in New Zealand sport, oh, hey, it's uh, Madonna Nariki. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, Jonah Nariki. Um, yeah. No, and and also easy for the Palangi to pronounce as well. If he had one of those ridiculously long ones, yeah, I just don't think it would have it would have been tough. Well, there's one guy who plays for the. Is he was still with the Gold Coast Titans, and he plays Origin. And it's the law. Tino Fa'asua Malawi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my ACC uh, Mad Monday commentary nickname. <laughs> Tino Fa'asua Manaiawi. <laughs> yeah, see, see that's spell that. Yeah, exactly. That's um put that on Guy Mont spelling bee. Yeah, yeah. Very hard okay. to get in Scrabble. All right, let's take one more quick break. We'll come back and talk a bit of motor games. It's uh no secret on this podcast, I'm not a fan of motorsports. In fact, I, I do refer to them quite co- quite often as motor games. But I also understand the place that they have in New Zealand sporting landscape. People love it. And it is Bogan Christmas this weekend because Bathurst kicks off. The Bathurst 1000, which I only just found out is because it's 1,000 Ks. Yeah. I didn't know that. Didn't you know? This is one of those ones where like I... Oh my God. I know. I know. It's been right in front of me. So are you telling me that the... the Indianapolis 500. Yeah, but it's miles. Miles, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Far out. I've only just learned out. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, so that that kicks off on the weekend. Like I said, I don't know a lot about um, motor games, but what I did notice um, looking through the odds on the TAB is all the names. They stay the same, you know? Yeah, but are you saying some of them are coming back as as uh, co-drivers? I was talking to a, a motor games enthusiast this morning, and and he was saying, yeah, because a lot of the guys they had retired from the circuit, but because you need two drivers for Bathurst, mm. it's a good chance to be like, like let's get this guy out. Yeah, because Murph won a title recently as a co-driver, didn't he? I feel, I mean, I, you're asking the wrong person, but you, that does ring a bell. Um, he is. A four-time winner who we tried to get on the show on um, uh, on with Jerry on uh, Hodaki Breakfast. I tried to, we tried to get him on the show this morning, um, but he had a team dinner last night. Murph. Murph. Oh dear. And the phone was not ringing this morning. Straight through to voicemail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the piss up those old boys must have when they get over there? Oh yeah, he, he's a he's a great New Zealander, um, Greg Murphy, and properly loved over there as well. Like yeah. uh, embraced, you know. It is quite tough. Like, obviously, Neil Finn with Crowded House, he, they pretty much think he's a, an Aussie. But Murph, more than a lot of Kiwi sports people, yeah. went over there and was absolutely adopted. Beloved. Beloved, yeah. 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 I mean, but they they haven't tried to steal him. They acknowledge no. him as a Kiwi. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, you Jamie Wincups are in there. Obviously, uh, Chaz Mostert uh, in there as well. Yeah, Garth Tanders. Oh, Tanda. Yeah, Heimgartner's in there as well. So it's all the same names. Craig Lounce. Is there a Chickadee Holden in there? Like the, as a car? Because <laughs> I remember one of the cars was sponsored by Chickadee. You know those ones in the, you had to heat them up at, in the service station? They were like a rat. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. They were, like, you know, what would you your go-to be if you went to the service the servo, the servo late at night oh. um, after a few beers? What are you going Pe- for? Pepper steak pie. Okay, yeah. And I'll get a power road for the next morning as well. Oh, that's quite... Oh, yeah, yeah. you're planning ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand at the window and make the, the dude behind the counter, <laughs> you go and get me a bloody gourmet pepper steak pie there, Cobbett. Blue power aid? Blue. Pff. Why do they bother making any other flavour? Yeah, exactly. It's got to be blue. The orange and the yellow. When you, when you handed the red, it's like, oh, really? Okay, sure. I've, I'll drink it. Oh, the orange, yeah. Ugh. If I see a sicko come out of a petrol station and he's holding a silver power aid, it just speaks volumes. 
Because what is the analog of that in nature? Like, what flavor is silver? Well, is it just cloudy? It's a cloudy yeah. piss. Cloudy piss. Yeah, yeah that's yuck. Um, um, so okay, I, you've got you've got your pepper steak pie. I yeah. feel like I'd go for a pie, but um, I think I tried a chickadee because <laughs> I saw it and I, I was the advertising worked. Yeah, and oh man, you cannot get it right. What's it's involved like, in a chickadee? It's kind of like a um, it's a wrap or a, a subway sort of sandwich, but you have to put it in the microwave to heat it up. <laughs> It's not good because it turns the inside into molten mush. lava yeah. and mush. Yeah, it's just. I mean, I don't know. It's that, that was their their whole thing. I think that's. I think they had other products, but yeah, yeah. I just remember going for a chickadee and going, "Nah, this is where New Zealand has it ahead of everybody else." If the pie warm is still going, yeah, and there's a good pie there late at night, that should go to, and that'll sort you out. You know, you don't hundred percent it will line the guts. A pie and then a good walk home. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, the next day. Um, you could get some something sweet. Uh, you don't really feel... Also, you're running the risk of throwing up at that point if you're eating something too sweet. Maybe the raspberry maybe twisty things. You know, there's raspberry twisty. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe. You go to the, the Twizzler or something? Yeah, Twizzler, like yeah. Um, nah, not for me. I did have a friend who used to work at the local petrol station which shut at 6 o'clock. And at 5.45, he would fill the pie warmer with hot pies. Oh, and then at six o'clock, he'd go to his boss, oh, mate, we didn't sell all the pies. And his uh, boss would go, oh, well, you just take them home, it's fine. He would walk back into his flat like Santa Claus, just like a hero. I got butter chicken, <laughs> I got mince and cheese, I got steak, who wants what? Yeah, that's good. Um, so maybe they need that at, uh, at Bathurst. Look, if you've come to this podcast to find out who's going to win Bathurst, we can't help you. By the way, if you, I can tell you about pies, though. And uh, <laughs> if you want to drive through the Waikato and you're thinking, hmm, I'm feeling like um, I'm a bit peckish, and there's all the chain brands around and you go, yeah. because there's, there's drive throughs everywhere in the Waikato now. Yeah. Never used to be like that. Matamata's Matt got like four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. It's got everything you want. But just go to your dairy, and if they've got Oxford Pies, that's the brand. Ox. Oxford. Oxford, yeah. It feels like it's just in that Waikato Bay of Plenty area, maybe even just not full Bay, Bay of Plenty, just a little bit to the Waikato side. Yeah. If you go there, you get an Oxford pie, you cannot go wrong. Um, okay. I reckon that they are probably the most consistent, just a good old dairy pie, yeah. and I steak and mushroom, but surprisingly there's a meatball pie which will oh. knock, knock your socks off. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Obviously, when you can't get a hold of a delicious four and twenty pie, this is oh, <laughs> yeah. shit. I'm, I keep on forgetting about our sponsors. No, no, they're not in the Waikato. So, okay, um, but yeah, obviously, if you can't find them, then uh, you, you go for yeah, your yeah. meatball. Sounds delightful to me. All right, let's knock this thing on the head yep. uh, for a Friday. Thank you very much, James. Cheers, Manaya. Great to be here. Um, uh, go the Mulus. We're in deep shit oh, though down in Taranaki. Oh yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. All right, hurry, hurry. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. Brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.